Hi, I am some other Bob on Flickr, and I am going to run through a quick tutorial uh, showing how to use a three-layer set to do Orton images. And the purpose for using three layers is to allow you to retain some sharpness while still getting a good uh, control of brightness uh, on uh, the multiply step at the end. Uh, what I'm going to do is open a, a photo that I haven't really played with before. And uh, so we'll see uh, how, th how this works. Um, so I'm going to be winging it a bit. Now I have here uh, a Chinese New Year parade picture that uh, I took a, uh, just a couple days ago. And uh, we're going to take a look at this. And it's a fairly well exposed picture. So there's not a lot that you would normally have to do with this uh, as far as um, processing. You can see it's got a pretty decent um, levels uh, channel here. So it's, it's not. Um, overexposed or underexposed. Uh, but if if I did the normal Orton processing as outlined on uh, the Nature's Photographer's website, you would do an apply image at this time and it would probably blow out some highlights uh, by doing that. And so I want to make sure that I don't have um, too much uh, of, of that problem. Um, I'm going to use one of my favorite techniques here is to take the middle control point and, and push it left. And, and you'll see that we get a brightening but we also have preserved what we have as far as highlights and preserved what we have as, as low lights. Um, in, in comparison to that, let's take a look at what happens when you do a brightness adjust. And, and if you push the brightness up, it, it looks like you're doing uh, a similar thing. But if you now take a look at the uh, levels, um, you're, you're going to see that you've pushed a lot of data out of the uh, total possible range of, of values. And uh, in particular, what you'll look at is this dark area here with the chair. You've, you've lost uh, some dynamic range there. Um, so what I'm, I'm going to do is, is not uh, do brightness, um, and I'm not going to do um, any other kind of adjustment other than a levels and push the middle uh, down. So I'm still using all the dynamic range um, of, uh, of, the, of the photo. And you can see that this dark area is dark. Uh, we haven't lost any of that data. So that, that looks pretty good. I, usually a number two here in the middle is uh, fairly appropriate. And you can adjust that uh, however you like. Um, so this is our, our basic overexposed picture. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this three times. So now I have three. Um, but you notice I also um, have, if I, if I turn these, these off, see, I, I've got my normal exposure there. So I want to have three of my levels as well. So I'm going to duplicate those twice. And I'm going to uh, redistribute those back so they're associated with each of their layers. Now I could uh, I could have flattened these and then copied twice. Um, and, and in this picture, I don't think I need to control the exposure that finely. But what what this allows me to do is take this this bottom pair, which is going to be my sharpness. Um, and I can combine that with a different exposure control than what I have applied for e these layers, which will end up being combined to be my um, pseudo blur sharp combination. Um, but now what I, I need to do is, is I need to do a blur. And I'm going to blur my top layer here by taking a, I'm going to pick the Gaussian blur, and I typically will do about a 20 pixel blur. Um, nothing more than that. You can do more, you can do less, whatever kind of effect you're, you're looking for. So now I have, have a blur. Um, but there are some things that I would like to keep sharp. Now, if, if I just had this layer, the blur layer, and the bottom layer, I could do a multiply, and I would get an, an even, Orton effect across the whole photo, but I don't want to do that. Uh, I want to have some parts completely sharp. 
after the multiply. So I'm going to click on this icon down here, which is the add layer mask. So now you see I have a, a layer mask here. Now, a lot of people don't know uh, what a layer mask is good for, and so this is a, a really good tutorial for that. Um, I, I've selected a brush, and it's fairly large, and it's fuzzy, and I have a 50% opacity, um, and I have black and white for my colors. And so now what I'm going to do with a selected in the mask, I'm going to paint a 50% opacity black. And if you can see what, what's going on here, all of a sudden, I'm starting to get some sharpness. And as long as I hold down my mouse button and fill this in, I'm going to end up with a 50% gray in that area. And you'll see what it's doing is areas that have gray in the mask will show the layers below. Areas that have white on the mask will show th that layer itself. Now I've clicked again, so it's going to do another 50% opacity in this area. And so I can play with the opacity of the brush. I can play with the color um, of the brush and uh, get, get whatever effect I want. Now what's really nice about this method of using masking is that I'm paint painting here and let's say I make a mistake. I go, oops, I've painted too much. And so I've got sharpness where I don't want it. All I do is switch to the white brush and paint over it. And you'll see that I'm, I'm getting white. Now I've, I've got to boost my opacity here briefly while I erase this. And I can go back to 50 and back to black, and I can continue to add sharpness wherever I want. Now, it's kind of hard to see on this little thumbnail, but if I Alt-click, you'll see what I've painted. So this, this is what I've painted on the layer mask. The dark areas show the layer below, which is a sharp copy. And where it's white, it shows the current layer, which is blurred. Okay, now we're ready to do the combination. So I'm going to select this layer, and I'm going to do a Control G, which is a group with the previous. And so you put a little little arrow there. So that means that this layer, which is my levels adjustment, and my this layer are grouped. I'm going to select this and do the same thing: Control G, and that one, and Control G. Now what I have done with this is I have completely grouped these without flattening. Now, I, I could flatten them all and then do my multiply layer, but I want to retain these so I can go back in and I can make more edits on these at any time that I want. So I have the flexibility to go back and, and alter. And so I like to leave things um, you know, unflattened as, as much as possible. I'm going to do another Control G here. Um, so now I have these grouped together, you can see, and then I have this grouped. So these four layers are acting as my Orton Blur, and this one is acting as my Orton Sharp. And now all I do is I flip to a Multiply Overlay. And I can play with the opacity to change however much saturation I get, because the Multiply is really going to be increasing the saturation. At this point, I've, I've kept my um, uh, blur and um, and the brightness under fairly good control, so I can leave the multiply at 100%. And uh, one of the other nice things you can do here is you can now hide the blur. So you can see how much blur I get and how much uh, saturation that brings into it. You can see it brings a nice richness into the brown of the coat and into, into the other areas. And you'll notice that I've still left the face all soft focus and blur, but yeah, we have some nice sharpness on these sharp lines. And that's really what I try to look for are, are some items that you, uh, you want to leave sharp that, uh, that you'll um, be able to see. So that uh, pretty much shows uh, how I am uh, doing most of my Orton work right now.